2.6b related rates. So we're going to continue on with um, spheres. And there's a box in this section of notes. And then the rest are all cones. Okay, so the height of a rectangular box is 10 inches. Its length increases at the rate of 2 inches per second. Its width decreases at the rate of 4 inches per second. When the length is 8 inches and the width is 6 inches, the rate in cubic inches per second at which the volume of the box is changing is fill in the blank. Okay, so list out the rates that you can identify. For example, um, well, this is not a rate, but I know that the height of the box is 10 inches. So the height is 10 inches. Uh, its length, so L for length, is going to be increasing at a rate of 2 inches. So DL, DT, because it is a rate, is 2 inches. Its width decreases. So the word decreases um, does have an effect on the number. So its width is decreasing at a rate, so that's going to be dw, dt, and the fact that it's decreasing makes it negative, and then 4. When the length is 8 inches, so when L is 8 inches, and the width is 6 inches, um, what is the volume of the box, basically? Oh, sorry. What is the volume... Volume's rate. Yeah, see? When the length is 8 inches and the width is 6 inches, the rate at which the volume of the box is changing is... Okay, so, now uh, we need to find dv, dt. So this is the information we have, and then we figured out what we need. So volume, this is a box. Volume of a box is length times width, times height. Okay, so we have three variables here. That's not going to fly. Luckily, there is one variable that doesn't have a rate, but it is a constant number 10. It says the height of the box is 10. The only thing that's really increasing is the length and the width. So, it's getting fatter and skinnier and whatnot um, in two dimensions, but in one dimension it's just going to stay 10. So the height of the box doesn't change. So I can actually just plug in the 10. And then we're just going to have, I'm going to put it in the front. So this is what we have. Now we have two variables. Okay, that we can do. Um, with two variables, this is the product rule. It's length times width, right? These L and times W, so this is U and V. I'm going to treat the 10 as part of the L. Um, so 10L will be U and W will be V. So dv dt equals, so u times v prime, so the derivative of w is just 1 dw dt, right, we don't need the 1, plus, so v, which is w, times u prime, so the derivative of 10l, well, we'll see, let me move this over, w right here, so the derivative of 10l will be 10 dl dt. So I'm going to put the 10 in the front, and then dl dt. So this is the derivative. So now we plug in the stuff we have. Okay, so dv dt is the thing we're finding, or looking for, therefore I don't have it, therefore dv dt stays. 10 times l. We'll see, l is 8. dw dt uh, is right here, negative 4. Plus 10 times w, w is 6, dl dt is 2, so simplify, we get negative 320 plus uh, 120, so dv dt is negative 200, this is multiple choice, I don't need my units because it is multiple choice. Um, but if it weren't multiple choice, it'd be negative 200, let's see, inches per second, right? Okay, so negative 200 inches per second is D.
the volume is decreasing at a rate of 200 inches per second. Next. Assuming that a soap bubble retains a spherical shape as it expands, how fast is the radius increasing when the radius is 3 inches? If air is blown into it at the rate of 5 cubic inches per second. Okay, so if you find it difficult to tell, like what they're, for example, the last line. If air is blown into the, into it, into the balloon, or the bubble, sorry, at the rate of 5 cubic inches per second. Okay, so this is a rate, right? But it might be difficult for you to tell, like, what rate? The rate of what? Um, so the keyword is cubic. Okay, what is the only thing that's ever cubic? And hopefully you're thinking volume. Okay, so that is the rate of volume. Um, that's usually a tricky one for people because it doesn't flat out tell you volume. Talking about air being blown in. Um, but if you think about it, when the balloon is filled with air, it's getting bigger, it's taking up more space. Space in that um, in that form is volume. Alright, so assuming that a soap bubble retains a spherical shape, so it's a sphere as it expands, how fast is the radius increasing? So dr dt is the radius, radius's rate. And we're trying to figure out how fast it's increasing, so dr dt, um, when the radius is actually 3 inches. And then it says if the air is blown into it at the rate of 5 cubic inches per second. So that is the volume's rate. Okay, so we have the radius, we have uh, the derivative of the radius, and we have the derivative of the volume. So then that means I'm going to need volume. Because if I have the derivative of it, then I should probably start off with the original um, function for volume or equation. So volume of a sphere. I'm not really positive if this is one that they would provide you the formula with or not. Um, but it's really not a difficult formula to remember. It's four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so derive the dv dt. Now the 3 times the 4 is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4, pi r squared dr dt, right? Because we are deriving with respect to time, and radius, we're using the, uh, the variable r, radius is obviously not time. So we have to implicitly derive. Okay, so plug in the stuff you have. For example, this is 5, and then 4, and then pi, and then r is 3, squared, and then dr dt. And simplify. Do math. So let's see. 5, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 4 is 36. Um, we're trying to solve for dr dt, so we need to isolate that. So divide both sides by 36 pi. And voila, there is my answer. Now, what does my answer stand for? Um, so, this is the rate of the radius. Uh, so a proper answer would be the radius is increasing at a rate of 5 over 36 pi inches per second. So there you go. That is a proper um, solution. Or solution answer. It's a full sentence and it is stating what my answer means. Okay, next. Example 3. Um, at a sand and gravel plant, Sand is falling off of a conveyor and onto a conical pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. The diameter of the base of the cone is approximately three times the altitude. At what rate is the height of the pile changing when the pile is 15 feet high? Okay, so um, there's some sand coming off of a conveyor belt and it's going to end up into a pile that is in the shape of a cone. So if you use your imagination, then you're picturing a pile of sand like this, right? Let me make a 3D. Right, so, sand, so the sand is falling from some conveyor belt, right? And it's um, falling and landing like a cone. All right. Um, it is falling into this cone's 
conical shape or pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. So again, there's the word cubic. So that's an indicator that this is volume. Um, so let's see. dB. Look, you know what? Let me write it down here. So dB dt is 10. The diameter of the base of the cone is approximately three times the altitude. Now, altitude is just height. So I'm going to change that word for height, okay? So the diameter of the base of the cone, so the diameter is um, three times the height of the cone. At what rate is the height of the pile of, uh, of the pile changing? when the pile is 15 feet high. So, at what rate is the height changing when the pile is 15 feet high? So dH, dt is the rate of the height. We're looking for that. And then the actual height is going to be 15 feet. Okay, um, so volume. I have the derivative, so I should probably be using the formula. So that is one third area of the base times the height. Now, the base is a circle, which well, should be anyway, right? This is the base. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. So that is what b stands for. And then, of course, h. Alright, so I have R and I have H in my formula, in my equation. But if I look um, over here where all my information is, um, even here, I don't have the radius or the derivative of the radius. I'm missing these two things, so that's not going to fly. I can't be missing two things. Um, I could be missing one, but not two. So then that means that there's something to do with this up here. Because they didn't give me the radius, they gave me the diameter. And they didn't even tell me what the diameter is, they just told me that the diameter is proportional in some way to the height. So, well first of all, since I don't want to use d for diameter because my uh, function equation does have r, which is radius, let me convert diameter to radius. Well, how are the diameter and the radius related? Well, the diameter, right, if you remember back to geometry, is this whole entire line from end to end. Whereas the radius is just half of this line. So, um, diameter is actually two times the radius. So then, let me solve for r by dividing both sides by two. So there you go. So now I have that the radius is 3 halves times the height. Well now I have radius, or rather I have something that I can substitute in for r, and by doing so, um, oops, what's wrong with this pen today? By doing so, <laughs> this is not doing what I want it to do. There you go. By doing so, uh, I can get rid of R altogether. So this is what I'm saying. Volume is one-third times pi times the radius squared times H. Well, instead of R, we're going to substitute this in. Which is three halves H. So volume is one-third pi. Uh, three squared is nine. 2 squared is 4, um, and then h squared, and then there is another h at the end, so h cubed. Simplify this again, right? I haven't even derived yet. I'm just trying to figure out my equation. Um, so, simplify this. A 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 9 3 times. So we get 3 fourths h cubed. So here's my final equation in terms of h only. No r's. Got rid of r. Which we're going to have to do sometimes. 
Alright, so I moved it a little to the left so that I could keep working here. I am going to direct. So dv dt equals, so I am deriving this down here. Um, so 3 times 3 is 9 over 4 h squared dh dt. Now, I'm missing um, dv dt, but oh no, they gave that to me, so let me plug that in. So 9 fourths. I'm missing h, oh, but no, they gave that to me too. 15 squared. And then dh dt, oh yeah, that's what I was looking for, so I'm definitely just missing that. Um, so, simplify. 15 squared is 225. 225. So I have 9 times, or divided by 4 times 225 equals dh dt. And then basically, we're just going to get rid of the 9 fourths and the 225. So the 9 fourths, okay, let's pretend this is maybe any, um, Maybe this is a problem where you wouldn't be able to use a calculator. The numbers are not that difficult to work with. So, um, 9 fourths, get rid of it by the reciprocal, right? 4 times 9 times 10. And then 225, I would divide that. So let's just write it here. And then that equals dh dt. And as scary as these numbers look, they really aren't that scary. 4 times 10 is 40. Um, 9 times 225, you could just do it old school, right? 225 times 9. Or even mentally, you know, what is 25 times 9? 25 times 9 is um, 225. And then 200 times 9 is just... Yeah, that's right. And then figure out that hideous number which is just 20, 25. I did that, this, this was mental. And then if you just want to do long ways, 9 times 5, it's 45. Carry the 4, 2 times 9 is 18. 18 plus 4 is 22, carry the 2. 2 times 9 again is 18, um, plus 2 is 20, okay? Whichever. Um, plus. So anyway, 4 times 10 is 40, 9 times 225 is 20, 25. Um, is there a pi I stopped writing somewhere? <laughs> there was a pi I stopped writing somewhere. Goodness gracious, I would notice now. Alright, let's see. Where did I lose the pi? I knew there should be a pi in here somewhere. Um, there should be a pi there. And then came over here. Thank goodness the pi didn't do anything anyway. I mean, it does something at the end, I just, you didn't have to do anything with it till then. And then there should be a pi still there. Totally forgot the pi. Sorry, pi. Um, and then the pi is down here now. And then the pi is still down here. Alright, not bad. And then dh, dt. And then, of course, uh, what did we find? What is dh, dt? dh is the derivative of the height, so therefore it's the rate of the height. Um, so, we found that the height is increasing at a rate of 40 divided by 2,025 pi. Oh, and this is feet per minute. Okay, example four. One more after this one. A water tank has the shape of an inverted circular cone with a base radius 2 meters and a height 4 meters. Okay, so the cone itself... Um, has a radius of two meters, two, and then it has a height of four meters. If water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of two meters cubed per minute, find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three meters deep. So the volume of the circular cone with radius r and height h is given by. So see, this is an equation, or sorry, this is a question that would be given in the AP exam, and um, the last sentence was included in, uh, in a question similar to this. Okay, so, um, the water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 2 meters cubed. Okay, so the water has the volume of the water, so the volume of the water is 2. 
the find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is three meters deep. Okay, so the water currently has a height of three. They want us to figure out what is the rate of this height for the water. DHT. Now, I want to point out the four is the height of the actual cone. The two is the radius of the cone. See, but what we're dealing with, or what we're answering, is the water. Okay? The water has a separate height, a three, and then um, we want to find the rate of this height, or rather, you know, how fast it's increasing, because the water is being pumped into the tank. Um, and then the volume of this water, the rate of it is two. So you have two separate heights here and two separate radii. Okay, the radius of the... Oh wait, no we don't have two separate radii because it never gave us the radius of the water. So, in this cone, the radius and the height of the cone itself is proportional. Well, look at it, the radius is 2 and the height is 4. So what is the proportion there? Oh, uh, well, if I multiply the radius by 2, I get the height. So that's my proportion. So go with me here, people. So proportion, right, because they are proportional. So the radius to the height currently is 2 to, oops, is 2 to 4. So that's 1 half, right? Um, so cross multiply. Well, you know what? Let me just go ahead and change it to 1 half. So cross multiply. I get um, h equals 2r. Okay. Now, I have plenty of h's going on here. I need the volume formula. And volume for this cone is going to be one third um, area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height. Now, I have height to plug in. I have this to plug in. I know I'm looking for this. Okay, so I'll be able to plug this in. Um, when I derive, I'll have the volume's rate to plug in. What I do not have is radius. I don't have the radius or a rate for the radius. So I cannot derive... Um, I can't derive this equation as is right now, because if I were to derive it, um, I would get the derivative of r, and I would have r, and I would have to plug those in, and I don't have those. So that means I have to get rid of r. So to get rid of r, you substitute in um, whatever r and h, however they're related, right? You substitute in something with h's in it. So that's why I did the proportion. For this cone, the radius and the height do have a proportion. Let's see, I cross multiplied and I got h equals 2r. Now, I'm trying to get rid of the r. So what you want to do is you want to solve for r. So if I solve this down here for r, um, that means I'm going to have to divide by 2. So I get r, I'm just going to switch it around. So r is going to equal h divided by 2, or 1 half h. It uh, doesn't matter, I'm just going to write h divided by 2. Boy, I wish it would stop doing that. Okay, h divided by 2. So now I know that r is whatever the height is divided by 2. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to include it here. So the radius, whether it be the water or the cup, it doesn't matter. It's going to be half of the height. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my equation. One third times pi times h divided by 2 squared times h. Simplify this a little. One third, well, you know what? The pi and the one third, I'm just going to put those together. h squared, and there is another h, right? So that's h cubed. And then the 2 squared, so that's 4. Um, so that's h cubed divided by 4. Um, let me just get rid of... Uh, 3 times 4 is 12. 
So there's my volumes, my volume equation, getting rid of with, um, without R, getting rid of R. So now this is my equation, only H's, J, so derive. So dV dt equals 3 times half divided by 12, and then h cubed becomes h squared, and then dh dt. So you should have everything here uh, that you need to plug in, except for the one thing you're trying to solve for. So dv dt is 2. Well, 3 over 12 is 1 fourth, so let me just go ahead and simplify that. h was 3, or supposed to be 3, squared, and then dh dt is what I'm looking for. Um, simplify some more, get 9 pi over 4, dh dt, and then we could just get rid of the 9 pi over 4 by multiplying both sides by its reciprocal, so we get 8 over 9 pi equals dh dt. So what have we found? We found um, the rate at which the water level is rising um, when the water level is 3. What was it? Meters? So the water is rising at a rate of 8 divided by 9 pi and the units of measure were meters per minute. And that is my answer. Now notice, I had to get rid of the R and the way I did that was with this, these pieces of information. See, these helped me get rid of the R. Um, I would not have been able to do so without that. And then I wrote a proportion because they were proportional. It's just H over R or R over H really doesn't matter. And then whatever they equaled over whatever they equaled. And then solved for whichever is the one that you need to get rid of. Okay. The next example is very similar. So, a student is using a straw to drink from a conical paper cup whose axis is vertical. Uh, we just have a paper cup. Oops. EDD. Okay. Um, he is drinking at a rate of 3 cubic centimeters per second. Or, er, yeah, 3 cubic centimeters a second. Okay, so cubic. This is the volume. dv, oh no, I'm starting here. dv, dt. So, he's drinking this water. Well, we don't know it's water. It's liquid, but I'm going to call it water. Um, so, if the height of the cup is 10 centimeters, so if the height of the cup, oh, that's not the liquid. Okay, so the height of the cup is 10 centimeters, and the diameter of the opening is 6 centimeters. Okay, I don't care about diameter, right? Please just take care of that right away. We don't care about diameter. Uh, the radius would be 3, right? Um, how fast is the level of the liquid falling when the depth of the liquid is 5 centimeters? Okay, so the depth, so the height of the liquid is 5 centimeters. How fast is the level of the liquid falling? So how fast is the height falling or decreasing? So dh, dt. Now, falling. Um, that means that our answer should be negative. If it is not negative, then we've got some problem here. Alright, once again, same formula. Volume. One third pi r squared times height. Once again, I have height, and I have the derivative of height, and I have the derivative of volume, but I do not have the radius, nor the derivative of the radius. Which means we're going to have to substitute the radius. We're going to have to get rid of it. So then that's when we're going to do our proportion again. We come back to this information right here, the cups information. Uh, we have radius over height equals, okay, so the radius is 3, the height is 10. Cross multiply, we get 10r equals 3h, and then I'm trying to get rid of the radius, right, because this is not going to work for me right here. So solve for r, so r is um, thre thread, 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 3 over 10 divided by h. So there's my radius. So I'm going to go ahead and use that, right, along with the rest of my information. So v equals one third, I'll just use a pi right there. So pi over 3 times 3 over 10 h squared times h. Simplify. 
Um, the threes? Oh, well, no. Can't do that. Three squared is nine. So pi, ha, 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 ha. so nine over 100. Um, and then h is squared, but then there's another h at the end there, so h cubed. Simplify, that goes in there once, that goes in there three times. So volume is 3 pi over 100 times h cubed. So there is my, um, my final equation. Alright, so now I'm going to derive it. So dv dt equals 3 times 3 pi is non pi over 100 times h squared dh dt. Plug in the stuff you have. So dv dt is 3. The 9 pi over 100 is going to stay right there. h is supposed to be 5 squared. And then dh dt is what we're looking for. Simplify. Um, 5 squared is 25. Oh, but look. 25 goes into itself one time and it goes into 100 four times. So now we have 9 pi over 4 dh dt. Uh, get rid of the 9 pi over 4 by multiplying by its reciprocal. So, 4 divided by 9 pi times 3 equals dh dt. Simplify again, that's 3, that's 1. We move down. 4 over 3 pi equals dh dt. And what does our answer mean? Our answer means uh, that the depth of the water is falling. Remember falling? I said it had to be negative. All right, so it's falling um, at a rate of, what was it? Centimeters, four divided by three pi centimeters per second. Now let me point out something. My answer is not negative, right? Um, and so I wanted to make sure that I had this We'll talk about the negative thing. This is a cone. Person is drinking out of it. I called it water. Doesn't really say what kind of liquid it is. Liquid, water, whatever. The liquid is leaving the cone. Okay? It is leaving the cone at a rate. This rate was the three cubic centimeters earlier. But you have to decipher the wording. See, it says that he the student is drinking at a rate of three cubic centimeters per second. That doesn't really say negative doesn't tell you, I don't think that you would just suddenly think, oh, it's negative. I hope you would, because you're understanding that the liquid is leaving the cup. But see, earlier when we did the volume, or rather dv dt, it is negative 3. Okay? So, it should have been negative, because the liquid is leaving. It, there's supposed to be, like, real world kind of situation things. So you need to understand that when things are falling, when liquids are being removed or drinking, um, you need to think, okay, so these rates are negative. Okay, so dvdt was supposed to be negative. Not a big deal. I just really wanted to make sure I talked about it. So this should be negative, negative, negative. Um, still negative. Okay, because the liquid is the depth, the height is falling. It is decreasing. Okay, so then um, if you needed to write a sentence out, it would be the level of the liquid is falling at a rate of, and then you would not include the negative because you're already saying that it's negative by using the word falling. Um, 4 pi divided by 3 centimeters um, per second. Okay, so sometimes it might not be as obvious that it is negative. The word falling tells you it's negative. His drinking rate. Remember, he's removing this water. Alright. I am done. Um, homework, if you want to catch up, is to, or not catch up, but get ahead. Just watch the next video.